<laughs> hey, what's up, friends? Thank you for joining us for another episode of Ask the Skinny Guy Saver. This is the show where I answer your questions in 60 seconds or less. We're on the topic of hormone optimization, nutrition for size, and um, these questions are coming directly off my Facebook fan page. So these are the problems that you're having right now, and I'm gonna offer a 60 second solution to get you on the right track. If you're not a part of my fan page, go to Vince Delmonte fan page right now. Be sure to uh, like the page, that way you'll be notified when I submit the question. Okay, so we got some great questions here. The first one is coming from um, Sanit. Sanit Pandey wants to know, hey Vince, I'm confused as to when to hydrate myself so as to not interfere with the digestion or push out the nutrients. What rule would you suggest for pre-post workout and pre-post meals? Thanks always. So Sanit, why don't we look at how much water do you need to drink per day? That's your first goal before you start thinking about, should I drink it with the meal and between a meal? These are little smaller details that are of less importance if you're not getting the amount of water you need, period. So here's, a, I think I've given a different formula before, but I'm gonna share an, another formula for you guys. You guys wanna write this down. For every kilogram of body weight, you wanna get at least 30 to 40 milliliters of water. If you don't know how to convert kilograms to pounds, divided by 2.2. So if we were to take a 100 kilogram man, which would be 220 pounds, he would need three to four liters of water a day. If we were to take a 50 kilogram, let's say female, so a female who's 110 pounds, she would need one and a half to two liters of water per day. That's like your base amount. That's gonna start to increase based on um, the amount that you exercise and the climate that you live in as well. So get that in first. Next question goes to Spencer Herring. Spencer says, hey Vince, are there any foods out there that actually hinder muscle growth? Absolutely, 100%. I've told you guys this before, you have my permission to call anybody an idiot if they tell you that all calories are the same. That's um, absolutely false. My rule of thumb, let's make this practical now for you, is that when you walk into the grocery store, you wanna generally stick to the foods on the perimeter of the grocery store. Those would be what I would classify primarily as whole foods, foods that you could find in the wild. So, you know, you've got your dairy products, you've got your uh, meat products, your fruits, your vegetables, you've got your nuts, your grains, things that if all the grocery stores in the world shut down, you would still be able to find out there. Those are the most optimal sources of food for your body. Anything that was, um, anything that's typically in the aisles is what I call a food product. It's boxed, it's packaged, it's refined, there's a lot of chemicals in it. Those are things that will hinder your muscle growth if they're taken in you know, excess amounts. So absolutely yes. So basically your rule of thumb is if it can be found out in the wild, it's optimal for your body. If it was something that was created in a laboratory, if it was created as a food product, um, those are the kind of foods you wanna eat at a very minimum and save for your cheat days. Okay, next question goes to Bart. Oh man, I'm stuck on this guy's name. I'll say his last name, Rajan. And Rajan, hey uh, Rajan, how you doing buddy? He says, hey Vince, I'm an ectomorph um, who stays away from animal proteins. What veggie foods can I consume to pack some muscle? Is, uh, is it practically possible to gain lean muscle by staying away from animal proteins or am I just majoring in the minors? I work out five days a week, I'm 23 years old and I currently weigh 170 pounds and tend to reach 185. Okay, Rajon, so the, the, the biggest thing that you need to do to build muscle because you're following what I call a plant-based diet. I personally don't like the words veganism or vegetarianism. I feel that those words have created a whole life of their own and they have a lot of philosophical and moral associations with them. So when we're talking about the way you're eating in context of fitness and muscle building and that, I just refer, I like you to think of yourself as a guy that's following a plant-based diet. And that's how I like everybody to kind of just think about it so that we can think of this in terms of what do I need to do to build muscle? So the main thing is that you need to uh, find foods that have complete proteins, that, are, that have all the essential amino acids. So as we know, guys like myself who don't follow a plant-based diet, um, I'm able to eat dairy and fish and meat and eggs and I'm getting all my essential amino acids from those animal products. Since you're not, you have to ask yourself, well, what uh, plant-based sources make up complete proteins? Um, 
I know quinoa, I know uh, buckwheat, I know flaxseed, those do have um, complete proteins. Um, but you'll find that a lot of plant foods are, I'm gonna keep this going a little longer than a minute here. Um, a lot of plant-based foods don't make up complete proteins. For example, wheat and rice. When you eat wheat and rice, you have a very low amount of lysine, but a high amount of tryptophan. But when you combine wheat and rice with legumes, vegetables, you're gonna get a high amount of tryptophan, but a low amount of lysine. So that combination will make up a complete protein. So what you need to do is you need to combine a lot of different foods to get your it's all your essential amino acids, all your complete proteins to build muscle. So I'm gonna put a resource for you down below. It's a link to a female that makes done for you meal plans specifically, specifically for vegans and vegetarians. Um, I just said I wouldn't use those words, but those are the words I think she uses to describe her programs. Uh, for people that follow plant-based diets, and um, I would recommend that you uh, check out her meal plans, which are specifically di designed for guys like you who wanna build muscle, fall on a plant-based diet. Okay, so check out that link below. So next question is from Kieran. Kieran wants to know, hey Vince, big fan of you and the show, I've been following you for years. I just wanna know your thoughts on the anabolic diet for mass gaining. It would be great if you could help me out, thanks in advance. So the anabolic diet was created by Dr. Mauro Pasquale, an Ontario-based physician. He's one actually of the first people that I heard speak at a, se a seminar way back in 2000 at the Swiss Symposium. Brilliant guy. The anabolic diet, from what I understand, is basically a, a very high protein, very high fat diet. Uh, virtually void of carbohydrates. So I think this, this kind of approach to eating is gonna be great for guys who wanna get lean, they wanna manage their body composition, but when it comes to any sort of endurance-based sport, any sport where glycogen needs to be in optimal amounts to train hard and long, it's not your go-to diet. Um, so for a guy like me who's trying to build muscle, who's you know training for 40 to 60 minutes at a time, I need glycogen to get through my sets, to get through the short rest periods, to get a pump, to prevent muscle breakdown. So a low carb diet like the anabolic diet would not be optimal for anybody who wants to build a substantial amount of muscle. For getting lean and maintaining a lean body, it's something you could consider. Could consider. Okay, next question comes from Adam. Adam says, hey Vince, what's a good healthy food to eat if you're hungry late in the evening or right before bed? Thanks, man. So when I say before bed, I'm referencing about an hour and a half, two hours before bed. I would go for a high protein, a high fat meal with vegetables. So I'll give you two options. One of my favorite is to cook up, you know, 10 ounces of salmon and have a big green salad with seeds and nuts, you know, pumpkin seeds, uh, different kinds of nuts. You can even throw some different oils on there, olive oil or avocado oil or, or grapeseed oil. Great, great oils. Uh, that combination of food is gonna keep you really full. full. It's going to be, um, a lot of high quality amino acids, greens, it's gonna be digested slowly all through the night. Uh, another option is to do the same meal, but instead of salmon, which is a high, fat, high protein, high fat meal, you could have like steak, you know, sirloin, um, any kind of steak that you prefer, even some beef and eggs, high protein. That's what I want, I want you to think about. High protein, high fat, vegetables, pre-bedtime, avoid carbs. Um, unless you're training in the evening, we've talked about that, that would be the best place to, uh, that'd be an, an awesome meal. So the last question goes to Jose Ignacio Fernandez Rico. So a little, having a little trouble reading the question here, but Vince, is possible maintaining a lean body and night out once a month? I have 18 years, but I don't drink alcohol, but I drink Diet Coke in the parties and not spoiling my diet. Supplementation recommend me some when I go out, I worry because catabolism. Okay, I think I get the idea of Jose's question. So he's worried about, you know, I'm going out once a month, you know, is it okay to booze? You know, what's happening here? So we kind of touched on this the last episode. So Jose, this question really just comes down to moderation. You know, I know a lot of guys that can, you know, it really varies. Cause I, you know, I used to go to university with guys that were shredded and they drank every single weekend. And then there were this, there was other guys in the same circle that were just getting fatter by the week. So you have to keep in mind that some bodies are gonna be way more forgiving to the booze. Um, me, I don't have that body type. If I start drinking every single weekend, my belly just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and it's just, it turns into a disaster. So obviously, you know, kind of 
get an idea of what your genetics are, but ultimately this comes down to moderation. So for you, once a month, is it gonna hurt your long-term gains? It's hard to say, one or two drinks, I hardly doubt it. But if you start smashing you know, five or six drinks um, every time you go out and this starts becoming you know, a lifestyle, absolutely it's gonna hurt your gains it's because there's gonna be other side effects to it as well. For me, I like to enjoy my booze on special occasions. You know, New Year's Eve, on my birthdays, when I travel and I meet up with friends I haven't seen for a while, and I kind of save it for those occasions. But uh, my days are long gone when I used to do the hard bin uh, you know, booze and drinking like that. So I'm kind of over that. So um, it really just comes down to moderation, man. Thanks so much for watching another episode of, uh, of the show here. If you enjoyed that, if it was helpful, you know what to do. Just click the like button. And also, um, if you are really enjoying the show and want to be notified immediately when I upload a new episode, hit the subscribe button. So um, I wanted to tell you about three cool things that you can check out right now to test your own knowledge, to see how well you've been absorbing this information over the last few weeks, over the last few months. What I've done, I've been working on a little project and I've, um, if you don't know, I'm going through a lot of different certifications myself as we speak and at the end of every certification or course, there's a test and I've really enjoyed taking the test and you have to score like, you know, 94% or higher to pass and stuff and, you know, some of them I get 92% and I have to retake it and um, I thought, how cool would it be if I were to create some quizzes for you guys, for you to take and for you to test out your own knowledge. So if you go to VinceDelmontiFitness.com, you can go to my site and you'll see three rotating quizzes. There'll be one for testing your nutrition knowledge, one for testing your training knowledge, and one for testing your supplement knowledge. They're free. All you need to do is just say, um, test, test my knowledge and um, take the quiz and then you'll see how you score. And uh, I think you'll enjoy the quizzes. They're not easy and uh, it'll give you an idea of how much room you still have potential for growing based on how you score. So uh, I'll be, I'm looking forward to um, seeing your results because I keep a tabulation of how people do and I can see how you did. So uh, head on over there now, take the test and uh, let me know what you thought. So we'll talk to you guys soon.